thought did cross my mind. Hi, I'm Gabe. Um, someone like two minutes ago, five minutes ago, just asked me, how practical is my talk? <laughs> so let's dive into the impractical for a little bit, and maybe we can, uh, I don't know, figure stuff out. I think, uh, I think it's fun to, to have, be curious about stuff and uh, dive into things that might not be totally practical, whatever that means. And then maybe you can come, we can come to the other side and find something practical. Okay. Um, just a little bit of background of like how, why I'm here, how I got here, um, what it is that we're doing. Um, for uh, like half of my adult life, I used to be in an indie rock band. And um, Spent a lot of time uh, writing music, recording music, touring. Um, music is a, a, the primary framework that I use to understand life. It still is. Um, fast forward uh, some years later, and uh, I discovered programming in Python. Um, so instead of working with these dorky dudes, I'm working with these dorky dudes. Um, and women, sorry, at Magnetic. Um, at this, it's an ad tech company. Um, and um, I mention it because there are two parts of what we do at Magnetic that um, kind of uh, brought me to this interesting question. So uh, we do something, it's an ad tech company, we do something called real-time bidding. We deal with a lot of data and a lot of streaming data. Um, and uh, we do something called programmatic advertising, right? Um, which kind of like, what? I play music, I work in programmatic advertising. What if we combine the two and make something called programmatic composition? Uh, which reminded me of John Cage, who's like this institutional minimalist composer, probably not in your playlist daily. Um, uh, most famous for, I forget the, the title or the length of time, but was just, there it is. Maybe on your place, maybe we could listen to that when we're done. <laughs> All the time. Uh, but he had a piece of music uh, called Music of Changes, uh, which was a piano composition that he, um, kind of wrote uh, and based on throws of the I Ching, um, and it led, like he made all of, the, all of the musical composition decisions fall to the I Ching. And I, I thought that was kind of an interesting idea. So that's one thread. Um, what if we just, instead of writing music, we write, read a, a batch of code that made all of our musical decisions for us? So that's one, one thread. Um, on the other side of it, this is a graph. This is another graph. <laughs> um, obviously, we do a lot of data visualization, right? Um, that is a well-established, beautiful science and art. Um, uh, under the hood, if we want to call it that, in data visualization and information design, um, we it, successful data visualization, data visualization <laughs> works. Uh, because it, it kind of accesses our like shared library of things that we already understand visually. Like we we've, we understand proportion and scale and perspective, foreground and background. Like these are like images of like chiaroscuro painting and Renaissance painting have been like in our minds and inserted into our brains since forever, right? So um, successful data visualization works. Um, the most successful data visualization works, I, I would argue, is exploits all of these, these beautiful things. Color theory, uh, perspective, and scale. And of course, Edward Tufte is like the guy um, that talks about this very well, much better than I just did in one slide. Um, so the other thread is, what if we did this for, uh, for sound? Like, why do we visualize, just visualize data? Why don't we also audiate data? <laughs> Data audi audiation. So it's a term that, that I found uh, by this guy, Edwin Gordon, who um, he does like uh, writes about uh, music theory and music learning primarily. Um, so uh, the idea is basically to come up with a way to like access our shared um, knowledge base of Western music, if we can do that. Um, just as data visualization encodes data uh, visually in a way that accesses the shared uh, knowledge space of, of uh, 
of, of uh, like Western art, let's say, I, I thought it would be interesting to try to, to try, and that's like the main, main term, the impractical term, the, to try to do that um, using scales, harmonic series, dissidence, a tempo, arpeggiation, things that we use in music and we listen to music all the time and it's in our brains anyway, right? Well, like this is just this experiment. So that's what this is. This is what this is. It's just an experiment to see what that might be like. So um, I wrote this little library that really is just like a wrapper for two other libraries um, called Tonal that uh, the idea is to parse uh, numeric data and um, uh, kind of uh, normalize it in a way and, up and put it into note buckets that, are, that might make sense to our ears as Western music listeners. I'm not going to get into microtonal Eastern stuff, but that's also really, it's like different five years from now after I figure this one out. Um, so yeah, so what I did in this project is um, I wanted to just do this very simply, rudimentary. Um, so what I did is um, I wrote this thing that queries like a weather, free weather API that gets like, uh, I don't know, uh, temperature, uh, humidity, dew point, all these, all these things. Parses that, um, uses uh, some some, uh, uh, some Python libraries, which I'll talk about, um, that kind of put, puts everything into uh, note buckets, right? And then uh, creates MIDI data, which is, um, MIDI is like musical instrument, digital interface, something like that. Um, it's like if you have like an like a electronic keyboard and you plug it into, it's like the, it's the way that notes get passed. It's just like a standard form. And I'm using this, uh, software called Ableton Live. It's like, uh, I don't know, it's like, I, I made not electronic music, I, what we used to call warm organic music, um, as it is warm and organic, and I was, like shied away from a lot of digital music. Um, but uh, it's a really great piece of software if you, you know, make such things. But there are a bunch of like reason, logic, there are like a whole host of things. So it basically like wanted to, it's funny because when at work people make fun of me for the for my, uh, I don't know, what do you call these things, for whatever these things are, because I was picked the wrong shape, so I was like, screw it, it's gonna be like a cloud into a box. <laughs> it's, <here. laughs> it's like no one's here to comment that I chose the wrong shapes for the, <laughs> but then there are two people that work with me here, so you guys might get me grief later. Um, so yeah, so that's what this thing is. I'm just gonna go through the steps. This is like, I sold this talk as like a, like a kind of a, a, a novice Python talk. Um, you know, like, it, I, originally I was like, oh, I can toss the, toss the data in a Kafka cluster and topic and read off of that, but that's just got silly. Okay, so here the, here's what I used to do this. Um, Midu um, is a Python library that's really easy to use to send MIDI data. Um, it's pretty straightforward, um, and it worked. It was like the only one that worked properly <laughs> um, for me. Um, there's this great uh, library called Mingus um, that, uh, like it's a music theory library, so it's like you give it like um, you give it like um, a scale that you want to use and a key, and it just tells you like the the notes in that scale and key. So um, use that. Um, there's this library called PyLive, which interfaces with Ableton. I'm not using it in here, but it's also like it, I was playing with um, things that would. It's a way to control Ableton, but it's it's not like in the scope of this talk. And of course, like requests to get the stuff. And um, just so in this live demo, which hopefully will the internet work, um, uh, I used um, Datadog and the StatsD library, which was written by Etsy to just like, so you can see what we're hearing, hopefully. Hopefully that'll happen. Um, and then Ableton, which I just talked about, and Tonal is the thing that hopefully will do this properly. Okay, so just to go through the, the steps, the basic steps. Um, we get the data. So get request, parse the data. Um, I'm doing, a, doing just weather data for like Lower Manhattan, I think City Hall, Latin Longitude. Um, looks, comes back like this. We all know what JSON looks like. Um, and I'm pulling out, uh, it's the, the get request is a, like an hourly log it's like you get like 50 to 60-ish, depending on how 
it feels for some reason um, pieces of these things it gives you like an hourly log and it just cycles through pulls out the thing so we can hear what this weather might sound like if we were wanting to make a composition out of it for some impractical reason um, so um, what my guy does is like it, it, it builds basically MIDI has a range of 0 to 120 this is like the full octaves on like a piano um, starting with something and ending with something else um, whole notes uh, in between notes, all integers, um, and uh, the data comes in. Pull out the pull out the value, and um, after telling, after deciding what what key and what uh, scale you want to use, uh, generates this, this uh, array, this list of integers. Um, and my guy just like kind of stupidly, if it's like between, I don't know, what's here, if it's between 72 and 74, you know, assign it to one of these guys randomly. Um, so it's not like the most sophisticated. Um, does that. Um, then we send the MIDI, we use MIDU to send the MIDI notes. Um, so under the hood for this guy is um, that Mingus library um, that gives you like a, the base range. So it'll give you one through uh, eight or 11 there, um, or zero through 11. And um, then we build the octaves around, around these, base, these this base set of notes. Then we send the MIDI notes. Um, and then MIDI, as I said, is a very simple library and just says, turn the note on. And you could, you know, the mapping here, that mapping function is, um, uh, does, it, does it takes the value. And if it's a value that doesn't fit into the range, it normalizes it so that it can't fit in the, into the range based on like the other ones that it's seen before. Um, and uh, the velocity is kind of like how hard you would strike a key, let's say. And the channel is the MIDI channel. Okay, so let's see if this thing works. I really talked fast through that. Okay, so it's been running this whole time. That's fun. So this is the Datadog representation of what I'm sending in. Does that get bigger? Right. Okay, so. Python tonal scales, tonal script. Okay, let's give it a harmonic major because we are happy today. So that's the scale, and let's start it in the key of A. So this is the, it's parsing it, getting the value, and sending it into these different channels, um, which we can see on here. And then this is already started up. See if this can work. So this is all the data feeding into one. Can you guys hear that? Okay, so this is Ableton. This is what it looks like. So then, this is all of the tracks in one, all of the channels fed into one kind of ambient sound bed in the, the harmonic major range in the key of A. Um, so it's, it's kind of cycling through the past hour of, of, um, of weather data, and then it updates that. updating that every like 30 seconds. Right. Um, so what I'm ha what I'm doing in each one is um, um, arpe arpeggiating. So it's, it's doing two things. So it is um, storing how many times it's seen that notes that that note, let's say, and then I'm also um, arpeggi so I'm building like a arpeggiating chord for each um, each in input data. Um, uh, but
but for the duration of the note themselves, I'm sorry. So that's that's basically that's just kind of like a, I'm just setting that to a standard. It's just like a one one quarter note. Let's say for, this, for the, you can determine in the arpeggiating, which I'm doing the arpeggiation in Ableton, which is so just like we're moving on to the chord. And the tempo I'm just setting arbitrarily at right now, just so 80 beats per. Yeah, it's I'm doing that, but there is some, I I would love to like work on this in a way where it's like depending on frequency of data coming in, which is where Pi Live would work really well because that can control the tempo. So Mingus and Midu are kind of like how I'm building the, the scales and then shooting it through MIDI, and then Pi Live is a way to it doesn't do that. It does it controls kind of like more of the metadata in Ableton, so that would be a way to like access that uh, that. Image. So that's the thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I just feel like there are, are um, a lot of fun things to do with this in that we can, I mean, you can play with different, uh, different like scales and uh, keys and just also to, it would be really cool to change the keys and the scales um, as different things are coming in. Um, I didn't get to that level of like uh, complexity with that. But, uh, um, I'm going to, I'm going to add doc strings, proper doc strings, other than the things that say "tell me what I, what you are," and um, I'll put I'll put all of this stuff up. Yeah, it's on, on my GitHub. Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking would be cool. Yeah, we should do this. Let's make a record out of this thing, right? Um, it, yeah, like I was thinking that'd be really, actually, really interesting to go through like historical, like replaying data, right? I don't know, like financial markets, a stock crash or something. Which is, you know, just like what does that sound like, and then like make make songs out of this. Uh, maybe not something so depressing, but <laughs> I don't know. It just seems like it would be a really interesting, like crescendo or drop. I don't know. Right. What does that sound like? I'm just was like, it just for me, it, it opens this path to just experiment and try uh, different things. There's no established, you know, like in data visualization, there's like a really good established like vocabulary for such things. We don't have that, obviously. I mean, it's not as practical and not as like, you know, it's like, but I, I feel like it can lead to something really interesting. Um, so that's, that's, uh, yeah. Okay. Sounds really cool. I will have to. I'm sad that I didn't find that in as I was like working on this. Cool. Is this what it always sounds like? When it's hot? <laughs> this is what it sounds like. This is what I have. No, actually, it was sounding really strange a few days ago, and I'm not sure why I didn't like dig into it. Like it didn't, um, but it was sounding even more annoying. Than actually, I mean, we just got hit by a big rainstorm. Right? Well, this is just the past like hour going back, so um, yeah. So it's like to go through and just like, but we'd have to sit and listen to stuff, and that might be kind of. There was someone that I was talking to was saying they listen to ambient music as it's coding. Um, maybe you could listen to music that's generated by your by the keystrokes of your coding. So it's like a strange like recursive feedback loop. Um, yeah, but, 
Uh, the GitHub is um, the github.com backslash uh, uh, Gabelev, G A B E L E V, like Victor. Yeah, because I'm applying that order to it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So like this is like the this is the my aesthetic decision to make yeah. it not sound because I had it going all over the place and it was like. So how did you impose that order? Right. So, um, like I like through the arpeggiation, you're deciding how how fast it's arpeggiating over the, the, the notes that are coming in, right? So you're setting how fast it's going in, and you're, I'm like. It's possible to explain like what could be it's, it's it's just iterating over a set of, of notes yeah. in a chord, sure. right? Yeah. So it's like. Um, yeah, or a scale, but of course, really. Um, okay, that's uh, any other questions? I feel like your interpretation becomes the art, right? right. You have an album of people doing different interpretations in the same day as that. Would there be so? Yeah, that'd be really interesting. Yeah, because I'm making, I mean, like, I, you know, I call, I'm calling a programmatic composition, but I am, of course, making a lot of decisions. In but I would love to like abstract it out further and further to, to have the data itself make these decisions. Um. So humans can hear um, the difference between intervals, like they recognize this is a fifth and this is not really expected. But we're not really very good at hearing the absolute, um, you know, which octave is it? Sure. So right now, and that, exactly. As hot as it is, it will be as high as it is. Right, exactly. Okay. So that's what's happening right now. And it's like a very simple way to do yeah. that, right? Um, yeah. No, I haven't. I haven't. This one is it's just it's become. I think the thing might have died. Um, say that again. I haven't done that yet. So, so with like taking the uh, taking the the MIDI and setting it, or just like or disregarding all. Right. Right. Yeah. No, it's definitely like things to to explore in that. No. So no, I have not done oh. that. <laughs> Five minutes early. <laughs> Three minutes early. Two minutes early. Oh, that's not too bad. Um, thank you, everybody.